Deep in the bowels of planet Earth live subterranean creatures. Their appearance, so disturbing, they must isolate themselves from the rest of mankind. But once every few weeks, a small group of these vile subhumans are permitted to surface and broadcast their annoying obsession with geek culture. This is the Darkgasm Podcast Show. Hey, and welcome to big episode 32 fancy edition of the Dorgasm mm-hmm. Podcast. This is for all our uh, premium subscribers, so if you heard that super fancy Please intro... Oh, whoops. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> all right, God, now we gotta give this away for free. <laughs> Son God of a bitch. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it repeated itself automatically. <laughs> when in doubt, pinky out. We're talking fancy, we gotta be fancy. That's right. Jeez. Well, this one's a freebie. So, uh... Well, yeah, welcome to the big show. <laughs> um... Wow, you know what? I'm just gonna. This is a first. I'm gonna introduce Kyle first because because uh, crispy screwed the pooch. Oh, oh, I love win- I love winning by default. <laughs> <laughs> Best play. Uh, all right. So it has been a while, mm-hmm. and um, many many things have happened. So um, sad. For for instance, I got a phone call today from my wife asking me if I've seen the dishwasher. As in, do I know where the dishwasher is? It ran away. Well, where we, um, I believe I mentioned this before. We we bought a house at the end of last year, and oh. we're having the kitchen remodeled here. And so the the contractors took all the cabinets and ever all the appliances out of the kitchen because they were also going to retile the floor and everything. And so, like, there's a refrigerator in my living room and boxes and boxes of everything that used to be in the kitchen in the living room in my office. And um, the stove is in the, the foyer. And the dishwasher is we, we in actually We hadn't actually seen the dishwasher. We didn't, pay, we didn't really <laughs> think much of it because who the hell thinks about the dishwasher? Until the contractor asked my wife, okay, where's the dishwasher? She's like, uh, you're, you tell, you're you tell me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it appears that they may have lost our dish our dishwasher i thought you I hope- like honey did did david copperfield stop by because now the dishwasher is oh, no this no. no so um that's gonna be a liability claim yep so that was a bit of levity and now i'm gonna make us all very oh me i'm gonna make me very sad uh, in that um, my my favorite author Terry Pratchett died yesterday. Yeah, yeah, that was Actually, terrible. I don't know if you saw Michael had posted McGovern had posted a um, a video a documentary that Terry Pratchett did in 2010. The about, assisted uh, suicide one. Yeah, I watched yeah. it today. And I was like, tear. Yeah, um, that was, that was uh, for well, people that. But- that don't know, he was, I think it was eight years ago, diagnosed with a, a rare form of early onset Alzheimer's. Um, and he became a big proponent of uh, assisted suicide because Alzheimer's, uh, in my opinion, is is just damn near the worst thing that could happen to somebody. Um, because well, the, it, the assisted suicide is even trickier mm-hmm. because by the time you want to do it, you're not lucid enough to make that decision. You can't speak. You know, like it's hard to even speak or. Uh, but yeah. You know, Although I think the I think the, the form that he had um, actually would have been he would have been capable of making the decision because it was actually affecting his body faster than it was his mind. If yeah, I but he couldn't think. talk for the past two years though. So but even though, yeah. That's but he change. apparently apparently didn't. He died of natural causes and did not mm-hmm. end up committing suicide. Which, um, I guess in a way makes me glad that things did not get bad enough for him that he he felt that he needed to end it you know what i mean like it's weird to say that but um what well while well, you two okay while you two are being debbie downers i actually have some good news oh wait hold on we still have yeah we're not done talking about there. jerry pratchett <laughs> oh <laughs> but anyway yeah assisted suicide yeah there you go kids um, but also, we also. I would like to it. assist Kyle with some suicide, by the way. <laughs> right now, mm-hmm. interrupting our our moment of grieving and, and tribute to a great author. But we also, since the last time we recorded, which was a long time ago, 
Um, we lost another, um, another big geek hero, another Nimoy, as well. Um, play that in tribute. And there you go. Yes, everyone on the internet arguing over whether the dress was golden, uh, white, or uh, blue and black was so it's illogical. Who it killed, the fuck are these it idiots that are saying Spock. it's gold and white? My wife. It killed, it killed <laughs> sorry. Spock. Your, your wife's a lovely lady. Um. <laughs> but uh, still, no, the illogicalness of this conversation killed Spock. So, well, I, no, That and he was also diagnosed with the form of, I, got, I couldn't even, don't even remember it now, but it was something, a heart condition, basically. Uh. Honestly, one thing I don't think a lot of people were aware of, and this was when I really first saw how bad he looked off, and it was a couple of years ago. Uh, a lot of people didn't know that Bruno Mars did a version of the, um, what's it called, the Lazy Song or whatever it was called, that actually had Leonard Nimoy in it. The actual music video had Leonard Nimoy starring in the music video, and it's actually fucking hilarious because he pl plays a crotchety old man. And, like, nobody knows this exists. Huh. Okay. Well, people don't watch music videos anymore. I know, but they, they should. There's no place to I, watch them except on YouTube. Yeah, I I saw the speaking of Bruno Mars and music videos. I saw the one for Uptown Funk uh, on accident one day, and I I'm like, man, this dude really really wants to look like Michael Jackson. That's what I thought. I think? Yeah, I I and I'll tell you, I really like the song. Like it's catchy as hell. It, my son, mm -hmm. he's only two, and he up down up down. Uptown? Yeah, it's, a, it's fantastic. I love that it's song. It's a great song. Well, that whole album's pretty good, but, I mean, Bruno Mars is insanely talented. Oh, yes. I, I, yeah, I I, I uh, was just not aware as I was, the, the quick glimpse as I was flipping through the channels, and I was like, there's some dude who looks like Michael Jackson. Yeah, he does kind of have that, that look. Especially in that video, like, with the hat and whatnot. Mm -hmm. like, I, I think it's funny we say hot pants. Because he's like, hot damn. Because <laughs> so Evelyn, and we tell Tr Evelyn, never sing that at school, by the way. Even if, we, even if we tell you the incorrect words. But, yeah. Kids. But yeah, no, I thought the fun, the, the, the funniest thing about the whole, you know, Leonard Nimoy, if you can call it funny, but it, is that it wasn't so much about him dying, it was the fact that William Shatner didn't even go to his funeral. Uh -huh. Really? Big deal about it. Well, he had a previous um, commitment for a charity event. Mm. I'd always heard that they didn't actually get along anyway. No, well, that was well, he, well, he, he did you know, call George Takei the wrong name for twenty or thirty years. Yeah, well, it's Takei or Takai. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as in it's okay. As in it's, okay it's okay. As in it's okay to be Takei. It's okay to be Takei. Yes. Um. But yeah, no. Th there's a there's a story that. George had told him it. Well, actually, no, it was, um, I think even Scotty had mentioned it on Howard Stern about, they literally, there were times where, no, a photographer had come to the set, this was during the TOS, and he was taking pictures of Spock, and William Shatner had in his contract there would be no photographers on set except for him. Oh. And so... You know they were they were taking pictures of Spock. You know, getting the makeup on in the morning, and William Shatner wasn't even there yet. William Shatner hears about this photographer following Nimoy around, and locks himself in his trailer and refuses to come out until, you know, until the photographer is is gone from the set. And Nimoy's like, "Well, fuck him. I'm gonna have the photographer." So he goes to his trailer, and so you have you know the producers and shit running from trailer to trailer, and you got like Takei and. Um, you know, Uhuru and Scott, you know, everyone sitting around, just, you know, sitting around on their asses. And then they go, they went to, you know, the craft services and came back and, the, you know, the shit's going on like for half a day. So, yeah, they, there was a lot of ego and tension between the two, um, or at least during TOS. But Shatner still claims they were, you know, fairly decently close. But he said the same thing about Decay and, you know, couldn't pronounce his last name. You know, I, I kind of get the feeling that he just thinks that. Everybody likes him, so <laughs> that counts. Yeah, which Captain Kirk? I mean, eh. He's kind of taking on that persona. But, yeah. but yeah, no, and it's funny. I mean, I don't even think that badly of him for not going, because he did have a commitment. It was for a charity, so it's not like he didn't blow him off for no good reason. But yeah. yeah. I you know, it's a rough, rough couple weeks for geeks lately. 
I suppose it was um, actually an, an excellent couple of weeks for me because <laughs> um, personally, except for the dishwasher thing, yeah, that sounds um, pretty crappy. Yeah, but uh, well, they they think they might have tracked it down. They think that one of the the guys on the crew, I guess, somehow I I don't know, like it got loaded in with all the stuff, like the cabinets and shit that they were taking to throw away. So I think they may have tracked it down. Anyway, that's not what I'm excited about. Um, one of my favorite um, video game franchises is coming back. Wow, nothing. Rock Band. I love Rock Band. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I about, figured you'd be happy time. to find out it was coming back. And and even better that uh, apparently, from what I read, the vast majority of the uh, tracks from the previous Rock Band games will, will be be able will to be imported, it. and yep. that is just flat out amazing. Yep. The fact they've kept the rights that long with that sort of uh, insight for the future is just brilliant. Well, I thought that they'd kind of gone out of business uh, a couple well, of yeah, years ago. Well, yeah, a lot ago. of people did. Um, I but, they so, stopped yeah. making them so they didn't go out of business. No I, no, I thought that, that like they, I know that like MTV owned Harmonix for a while, and I know they sold them off like fucking dirt cheap. Like you and I, and I was going to say Kyle, but <laughs> you and I could have pulled our money together and bought the company. Which is a shame because Harmonix was still working on other games. Yeah, well, it was just that I, I've mentioned, I've talked about this before, maybe not on the podcast, but with people that uh, like Activision just fucking ruined the rhythm game market by putting out multiple Guitar Heroes every year. It, twice, shitty Guitar twice, Heroes, two, three, two to three times a year because they had different. Yeah, games. no, 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 no. The the peak, the year they put out Metallica, which everyone pretty much considers the best, they put out six. Hero games. They yeah. put out Guitar Hero like Legends, which was like the best of up to three. They put out Metallica. They put out Band Hero. Aerosmith. They put out Aerosmith. I think was the year before, but they put out one Van of the Halen. numeric ones. So they did like five or six in one in year, and that's when it started going down here. That's when it started going uh, downhill. Yep. And then like Rock Band, which was in my opinion far superior to the Guitar Hero games. Um, Excluding that ACDC shit, they uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, they just kind of got caught in the whole backlash thing. Mm-hmm. So, which is yeah, people were tired of rhythm games, you know, in general. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily their fault. It was just they were a rhythm game that bit them in the bum. Yeah, no, that's cool. It's good that they are. It's gonna. Is it gonna be for all consoles? Um, like Xbox, Xbone One, and PS4. I, I don't know. I know it's going to be the the current or next gen. Are, are they still calling them next gen or are they current gen? I don't know. Yeah, they're the X. next gen. That's what they they call them, even though they're not. They're still calling them close. next gen, even though they're current gen. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, Xbox One, PS4. I'm guessing probably uh, both. Is it going to come out uh, this year? Um, I thought they said I 2015. Think, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think so. so I'm probably. guessing probably 360 and PS3 will be included too, because why not? Release later this year for Xbox One and Play and PlayStation Four. It's rock, see, and that it's only Rock Band Four compared to like you huh? know, Guitar Hero now, Twelve. Now, th- yeah. To be fair, they they did release a Lego Rock Band that was not in the official numbering system, which was still pretty fantastic and it was had more like kid friendly kind of songs if that makes sense and like i bop, said they did the kids not, did release like not not, not not you know like the wheels on the bus or anything but probably yeah. shit you'd hear on radio disney and there was acdc and there was the beatles of course the beatles one got fucking huge yeah everyone yeah. was going crazy for the beatles because well, they one. had the replica guitar and the beatles one didn't they Yep, that's actually I use my Paul McCartney uh, the Hofner bass. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So well, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I I, got, I don't think I had mentioned it in the last podcast because it's been a while. I don't think I had it, but yeah, I picked up a PS4 close to Christmas. Mm. I like it. I'm trying to get Rob to buy one. Yeah, <laughs> and I was seriously considering it, especially actually. What, what I, I'm you? interested in that game, The Order. Yep, and what about Bloodborne? That's a PS4 exclusive. Uh, I don't know anything about that. Oh, but you should look it up. I that Power Show 
looks pretty cool. <laughs> Powers is a PlayStation exclusive. Yep. Yeah, yeah I think we've covered it. I think we covered that before. I wonder if it's going to be like, uh, you know, like House of Cards. They've got on DVD. Um, Netflix released it on DVD. Huh. So I wonder if uh, PlayStation will do the same thing. I don't know. Try I think you have to, to buy a PS4. And, uh... Well, so I, I thought about it, but then I realized that Lego is releasing the Ultimate Collector Series um, um, Shield Helicarrier, which just looks too fast. <laughs> I know. Wow. Like, he's like, I had to decide between a PS4 and Legos. Yeah. Well, and unfortunately, uh, see here in, in uh, Florida where I live, it gets cold three days a year and <laughs> I, I found out during one of those three days that my furnace wasn't working in the new house which we couldn't test because the previous owners didn't have the gas turned on it was a gas furnace and even if it was turned on we would have noticed because it would turn on not catch fire you know the flame wouldn't catch so it would shut off and immediately restart so it sounded like it was on the whole time <laughs> wow. so it didn't work yeah, so we is it call- a direct line or is it pro- like a tank outside? No, it is natural gas. It is like not you, have a, you have an actual natural gas line to the house. Yes. Okay, that's cool. I wish we had that. And um, so we called out, you know, a couple of different repairmen to give us estimates, and it was going to be r- stupid expensive to fix. So we thought, well, you know, it only gets cold like three days, so we'll just you know wear jeans the whole time and um, you know pull out a comforter. And, you know, once the air conditioner goes out in a few years, then we'll just replace everything all at once Uh, because the air conditioner is working great. And then two days later, (laughs) the air conditioner went out. So, uh, yeah, just as it was getting hot again. So that was super fantastic. Lovely. Yeah, I just bought a new air conditioner and furnace. So now I'm so now I have to wait for a PlayStation or the Shield Hill Carrier. Oh, shit. I think I think you get more fun on the PS4. Uh, probably not. No, uh, I have to doubt that too, Crispy. I'm going with Rob. I'd rather have the Shield what? Carrier. What? It's a PlayStation. Come on. I, oh, it's good. It's I enjoy it a lot. And you can play free games. Like, like the best part about the PlayStation, and I, I mean Xbox is way free things too. But man, it's been ridiculous when I've gotten free. Like I played tons of Warframe, which is free to play. You can put money into it if you want, but you don't need to. Um, if you pay, they've got money, that on the Xbox. But Warframe. Yep. Okay. Um, I, then, I haven't I haven't downloaded it or played it or anything, but I did see it in the list of Xbox games, and I guess the Xbox Store or some shit. But the the monthly exclusive games you get from the PlayStation mm-hmm. you know, Premium or whatever were great. Like I picked a, it. They had Valiant Hearts this past month. Um, Ali Ali <laughs> Two. Um. Then, like, one month they had Injustice, Gods Among Us, like, the collector's edition, like, the whole thing. Um, uh, Oddworld, t- uh, uh, New and Tasty, the remastered version of Amos Exit. It was, like, a $40 game, and it was free this month, too. Uh, so I put that in my library to download. But, yeah, there's, like, a free three to four games every month. That's just, yeah, Xbox my, does that, too. Yeah, but their games aren't nearly as good. I looked at, I looked at the difference. So... I well, know. I don't know. The, the games that I, to be honest, I've only played a couple of the games, like Guacamelee, which was actually pretty fun. Guacamelee's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't played many of them, but uh, I, I'm, Did you I'm have honestly. The Xbox One or no? Yeah, well, the great the thing Xbox about the one? Xbox wow. One is this: even if you don't have an Xbox One, and they, they, I was doing this beforehand, but they've started promoting it. I just have a 360, but you can still go ahead and download the Xbox One games while they're free. So when you get an Xbox One, you have these games already to be downloaded onto the system. Nice. Well, see, so here's the thing. I, I mean, it's not so much the networks that I mean. Xbox always had, a, you know, their network is pretty good, and PlayStation needed to do something similar. And I think they have. I, they, I had no problem switching to it, and as as, as an actual user ex- interface experience, it's great. But really, it comes down to the technology and the hardware. And basically, the Xbox wasted a bunch of their hardware to incorporate, you know, the um, Kinect. And then they don't, you know, then they now they have a bundle without the Kinect. So you have, a, and they they never even did. You know, I the, I don't the care hardware. what you say. The Kinect is fucking awesome. Oh, 
No, I think I think as a youth, they should have continued to market it. I think I think well, they see, that was, stood behind their. I, I agree, because that's the problem with peripherals is that you know there there there's always there's a couple of maybe cool things for it, but developers don't develop for it because you know they can't guarantee that you know a significant percentage of the user base will have it. And yeah, so I agree that they should have stuck with the the Kinect saying, "Look, every Xbox One's coming with Kinect, so fucking go nuts and make." cool shit for it you know and developers would have done that um but it just sucks like stuff like unity like assassin's creed unity um dragon age the order you -hmm. have the developers you know and they're basically lying straight to your face saying oh no 30 fps is more cinematic it's like no it's because you have to make it for the x well the order is not as ps4 but it's like you have to make it for the hardware available and we know that xbox is the low man on the totem pole when it comes to the hardware which is why next generation is a very big misnomer with them because really it's like a low low computer rig you know low low spec computer rig nowadays it's not terribly impressive so i mean i went with the ps4 because that's what my friends play but it's also tech technologically slightly superior and it, just look better. i don't know i see i'm not even concerned about technology wise and i wasn't with the, the 360 or the ps3 either because what's going to happen what always happens with consoles is that the developers um stop using the well not completely stop using but like the developers kits that microsoft and sony releases and they actually start coding the games to like in assembly language to the hardware to really um you know get the most out of out of what's available which is yeah, actually why it's so difficult to port games uh, to the next gen once all the the you know hardware completely switches? Uh, that's why backwards compatibility is such a bitch. Um, Plus, King of so, Hearts. That's, and that's I mean, you know, in, in last generation, uh, the Xbox is more powerful than the PS3 because because that cell processor was just a terrible, terrible idea, and uh, it was just a pain in the ass to code for. Apparently, yeah. But well, I liked the 360 it, more than the PS3. It, it evened out. You know, like, with within a few years, you know that it pretty much evened out, and the developers they they kind of learned how to code for each of them better, and and optimize everything for that particular machine better. So in the end, it really didn't matter. And, and to be honest, like you said, even uh, the the multi platform games are always going to be limited by whichever you know, machine has the limitations. So even the superior machine is going to be stuck with the same limitations <laughs> because pretty, the developer much. is too late. You know, the developer doesn't want to put in the work to put make two games, you know, two versions of the same game. Nope, yeah. that's, so, why they have, that's why they have teams for last-gen versions and new-gen versions. Yeah. So... Yeah. I mean, there'll be some... There's some difference in, like, picture sharpness and everything and some of the texturizing, spe- but as uh, far speaking- as, like, frame rates, yeah, they're, they're stuck... Sp- Speaking of, real quick, since I don't think anyone out there pretty much covered it, um, picked up Assassin's Creed Rogue this last week, and it is a surprisingly good game. It's a little on the short side, which I think is because it was kind of an afterthought. You know, they didn't even officially announce it until um, Unity had been announced for a while, but it is solid. I mean, it was enjoyable, and honestly, it had a level that was probably my favorite level out of the entire franchise. So it's not like they made it a shitty game. It's good quality. A lot of the problems I had with 3 and 4 as far as the sailing situations they've corrected. You can actually quick travel between the different uh, water maps now. So if your destination is in the North Atlantic and you're over by New York, you can just quick jump to the edge of the map instead of having to sail the whole way in real time and take an hour and a half to sail across the damn map. Um, They also added basically a Gatling gun to your boat, so early on you're not going to be overwhelmed, because that's why I stopped playing 4. I was having the most fun with 4 since since 2, but I got stuck on like the second naval mission because of the hunter ships, Um, so it's not an issue anymore. Um, You know you could not kill the captives on the ship and that would reduce your... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you try to you try to run, but the damn thing would just overwhelm me. It was no, it was ridiculous. Ships, you basically yeah. tried not to get the hunter ships on you in the first place. You would not. Yeah, exactly. Captives. And then yeah, but there was a there was a mission where you had to do it. Um, yeah. Regardless, so overall, Rogue was a very enjoyable game. It was very well done. 
Um, the characters are very well developed. Honestly, it starts out slow. I mean, I even had the cognitive thought of, man, this is shitty. They didn't introduce this character. I don't feel for him, but they rectify that very quickly. And what's really cool is they actually directly tie the end of Rogue to the beginning of Unity. Yeah, I've actually got that, um, sitting waiting. I I got it shortly before I moved and to get a chance to play it. Um, my problem is, man, I've just been stuck on three. Like, I try to play three, and I just, I, man, it just three's it's terrible. Just, three was an awful game. Yeah, yeah. You kinda, you the fighting right the, to four. <laughs> they they changed the fighting in three, which made it very convoluted. Uh, you don't like Connor. You never get to like Connor. He's well, it's a not, prick. It's not even that. It's the the goddamn the forest is just. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's just. <laughs> They they did correct that to climb this building. Well, it, that and well, like they've well, got cliffs and stuff, and you get to it, and you're like, oh yeah. shit, now I've got to well, go. Not and even find that. In path. three, in three, it was still a new idea. They didn't refine it. By like uh, rogue, it's not a problem. But even in four, the trees weren't a problem. It's just in three, it was like they wouldn't make pass. It's like they would make half pass, and then you get thirty feet in the air. And there's nowhere to go forward, and you have to turn around and go back down. It's like just a mind fuck. Yeah. It's like, why the hell are you going to make this path if I can't go all the way somewhere? Yeah, it's it's just annoying, and it just it's tedious. And I, I wanted to like it because it, you know, before it came out, it looked awesome. I loved the idea and the concept yeah. and everything, but it man, did. it's just tedious as hell. Well, three is a dark time on Assassin's Creed. Four is much better. Sincerely, like I said, Rob, it's short of the expectations of sailing uh four was great when you were on land but um i spent more time in the boat than i did the land and <laughs> i, I, I like i love it out of the three i 100 th- percent can say i liked rogue the best okay um you've been playing any games rob uh no i my um you put the game of moving into a new house yeah my computer is not hooked up still my my desktop for gaming um i do have my xbox hooked up but uh mostly just for watching tv well um yeah i don't really think i've played any games on it oh no the escapist i've been playing the escapist on it a little bit okay that's the one where you're in prison uh uh-huh yeah it's a fun yeah i have it on the pc but um I, yeah, I, I don't know, it was on sale or something. I got it cheap on the Xbox. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, Rogue Legacy was one of the games on the PS4. That one's a lot of fun. It's another platformer kind of thing. But uh, No, I've been playing um, a new MMO for the past couple days. Uh, it's a closed beta, but you're free to talk about it. They, they want to get some hype for it called Skythrone. And it's, uh, it's an interesting take. It's like a sci-fi fantasy, and it's set in, I, I guess you'd call it the future, I don't know, it's an alien kind of world, um, and you're an immortal, and you basically, and all a bunch of immortals are trying to reach godhood. So you, you, you know, have different zones, and you raise up your, worst your followers and everything based on your actions, and then you get these, uh, I think they're called inspiration points, and they're, it's kind of like your level, but it's not, there's no particular level, it's just you have inspiration points, and the more you get, the more you can unlock and uh, it's an interesting concept. I, I, I'm enjoying it. It's very rough, particularly in the uh, the audio and video. It's uh, it's it's from Obsidian Entertainment and a Norwegian company, I believe. I think the Norwegian company has a lot of the voice acting filler. <laughs> so, you know, like the on uh, Family Guy, how they have the guy, the European guys that don't quite sound English. <laughs> That's like the voice. I was so stuff. close to getting yes. sex with my hot girlfriend. Hot girlfriend, yeah. Like but then that girl. happened outside, and when I came back, she was like, "No way, no way." Yeah. <laughs> so they'll be talking, and they'll just have that every once in a while. It's pretty, and they're like talking fast because it just it was just filler. They were just they were just recording voices and stuff. And, um, so the story, you know, it's it's kind of hard to follow in that in that mode. But I mean, it's nothing terribly. The, the one problem it has is, like, I guess it doesn't really start letting you into the game until, like, 8 to 10 hours into it. Like, you're kind of confined to small little zones where you're learning and unlocking your abilities. I think it's basically a very long tutorial, and it feels very isolated. I haven't met many people except in the home world, and no one... You can do everything by yourself. There's no reason to group with people. But, you know, 
you can get a you can get a, you can go to skythrone.com and uh, there if you want a, a key it's you can do the founders pack kind of thing. I just bought the cheap one for now to see what I thought. Because I heard a lot of people that were very excited. They're like, oh, it's like going to be Guild Wars or 2 or Archage, you know, good version of Archage. And it's going to be a free-to-play MMO. So I figure you put a little bit of money up front, get some cool stuff. I don't know. It's worth it's worth to, to look at, though. It's, uh, it's definitely got a very Star Wars The Old Republic, which Obsidian made. Um, the second one. So it's got that kind of art style to it. Um, the interactions are there too. But it's funny, there's no mouse like in the menu system. Like You don't really use the mouse. And it felt weird. I, f I feel like in MMO you should be using the mouse and the keyboard. And I don't like just keyboard controls. They said there's going to be controller. Um, like uh, uh, Controller support? Controller support, yes. Yeah, at some point. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's worth a look. You know, I think they can make some improvements. But it's closed beta. There's a lot, a lot of time to go. I don't even, you know, there's, they just started that. But yeah, there's that. Um, you guys are watching any good TV shows? Still no cable. Still no cable. Uh, I have been watching a good show. I've been watching Arrow. The first season. Yep. Which wasn't even that great of a show yet, until the. Close to the end no, well, I, I argue that point, but I, I believe I told you, gentlemen, my idea on it back when it first did come out, and y'all were watching it. With with um, Smallville, it was Superman. Everyone's going to watch because that's DC's mainstay. So even though it was less action, it was slower to build, people watched it. Arrow, they only had one chance. They had to hook people right away. That's why, you know, Deathstroke's Max is in their first episode. That's why there's, you know, twists and turns with every moment. It gets more convoluted with the plot and with this, that, and the other happening. They had to snag people because Green Arrow was not going to pull people in like Superman. And it yes, seems so. to have paid off because, I mean, you have Flash now. You have talks of, uh, what was it, Our Man and other, you know, DC heroes. Uh, so Supergirl on CBS, and they're actually going to have a crossover. They even revealed the costume and the actress and everything. Um, mm-hmm. Here as both Supergirl and Kara Danvers. But, I mean, I mean, man, DC's playing it pretty smart as far as that goes. I don't know how long it'll last on CBS. I don't know how big a draw Supergirl will be if they can handle it the, the well or not. But I'm, some people might argue with you on the whole Arrow thing, though, that they kind of were kind of slow in certain aspects or, you know... Because they called him, like, the vigilante for fucking forever. <laughs> well, that's not a problem. I mean, I don't yeah. care what they call him. But like, and people, and you know, they finally start coming. You know, they kind of change his character in the second, third season to be more like what he is in the comic book. So there's an evolution there, I guess. But mm -hmm. it felt like they, were, it wasn't a natural one. It was more like, okay, fine, we give in, <laughs> we'll do it. Because, but sucks. like the Flash, the Flash is great because it's just like we're just gonna give you like the Flash. Like there was no hoopla. It took like an episode. <laughs> for him hoopla. To get in costume. Yeah, it was like it took a co an episode for him to get in costume. Oh, actually, um, I saw that they're already they've already announced a, an Adam spinoff. So, yeah, well, they they talked about an actual like minor character like group spinoff, so that might include the Adam Firestorm. Well, if they've Ooh. signed up. They signed Mr. up. Uh, what's his name? Brandon Ooh. Brandon Routh Ruth Routh for the Adam. Yeah, they 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 signed him up. They signed up. Um, um, What's your name? Sarah uh, uh, Lance. The, no, Sarah Lance, the original, the Black Canary that yep. got killed this season. Yeah. Uh, spoiler. Spoiler. Um, and then uh, Doctor Martin Stein from the Flash, uh, aka Half of Firestorm, is so all three Martian. of them are already signed up for it. Yeah. Martian like Manhunter. No. Oh, he said Doctor something or other. I thought I meant Dr. Martian Stein, Manhunter. Who's, who's half a Firestorm, which is with uh, Ronnie Raymond. Is it is it Ronnie or is it Jason in the show? Ronnie. Ronnie. But they had Jason. Did you notice that? She talked, they talked to Jason. He was part of the fire, he was new hmm. part of the Firestorm project. Uh -huh. That that person they talked to about it, who said, you know, we have to shut up about it, I can't talk about it, because they'll, they'll come and get me. But that was Jason Todd. Or not Jason Todd, Jason, um, shit, what's his name? They didn't turn Jason's girlfriend to salt this time, did they? No. Good. No. Yeah, not, 
uh, Blackest Night. Um, yeah, but no, yeah, so it's Martin, Dr. Martin Stein, yeah. So yeah, it's like gonna be like a spin-off show that's kind of like, I guess, the sub-tier quotation marks, you know, sub-tier superhumans, metahumans. Um, trying to think of what else. Did you guys watch Agent Carter? Now, I've seen like half they, of it so far. Are they done with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or is this just a spin-off of a spin-off? No, that so was what, just a, a hiatus type of show. Yeah, so they, they, they are going to... It looks like they're going to do another season of Agent Carter. So what they do is they show the first part of Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They'll have a long hiatus, you know, the six to seven weeks or whatever Car- Agent Carter is, and then they come back to S.H.I.E.L.D. to finish off. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah unfortunately, moving is really fucked up my team. I'm... I'm st- I finally got caught up on like Arrow and Flash, but I'm so far behind on so much. <laughs> yeah, I, Agent Carter is has kind of torn a lot of people, you know, torn apart the fans and this, you know, whether they like it or not. It's one of those, you know, polarizing I shows. I, I'm of the opinion that it's okay. It's not. I I, I didn't think it was great, but um, you know, like it. it's fine. It's, yeah. Well, a lot of people were like, oh, it's it's just. You know, it's all about feminism, and they make the guys like buffoons and imbeciles. I'm like, yeah, a little bit. I don't, you know, I don't think you need to make guys dumb to, you know, propel a woman character forward. They can be competent. But I think as they go on later in the show, I think it kind of levels out. But I mean, I I like the best the show is is when it's Peggy Carter and Jarvis together, and like her trying to play both sides. You know, it's. That's the one that's the most interesting, I think. And they kind of lose sight of that by the end of the season, the first season. Um, but it was good. I uh, I like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the whole Inhumans um, thing they're doing. Oh, yeah, they're I'm bringing still... in the Inhumans now? Yep. Yeah, oh. that's that's what Marvel's doing since they don't have the movie rights to the uh, mutants. Well, it's Inhumans smart. aren't mutants. But that's exactly. what they're doing for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They can't use mutants... Oh. So they're using Inhumans, Inhumans instead. Inhumans, gotcha. Yeah. It's smart, because someone, someone mentioned, I read an article, it was like, they just bought themselves several seasons right there. Like, <laughs> they could get renewed for two to three more seasons just because they have that much they can do with the Inhumans now. Nice. So, yeah. And Black Bolt, Black Bolt's long overdue to be introduced. Yeah, I don't... I haven't, I haven't met him... They, it's they, funny like because say, it's very early, so there's really there's only been a couple. Well, well, it's just funny because Medusa was one of the bigger characters when she was first introduced. I mean, she was passed around a lot. They tried to make a lot of her, and I guess because she was successful is what led to there being so many Inhumans. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting to see. Uh, what else? TV news. Uh, Better Call Saul has been pre- and again I'm. Few, I watched the first back, episode. Yeah, I'm way but behind. I, I liked it. I've seen the first two or three, and I, I my wife and I both quite enjoy it. Uh, yeah, uh, the no. problem is that it's very difficult not to compare it to Breaking Bad. Huh. Um, you know, to kind of watch it on its own merits. <laughs> but um, I think it's really good. Yeah, it definitely holds its own. I, I don't. I really like the beginning of the first episode, kind of the, the current day situation of something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in black and white, nonetheless, which is kind of interesting. Have uh, either of y'all watched uh, Last Man on Earth? No. No, but I heard it's pretty funny. I heard it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you continue a show like that. Yeah. Well, he's not he's, he's not the last person on Earth. He's just the last man last on man. Earth. Oh, yeah. Well, they introduced, um, what's her name from like Christian Shaw, and apparently there's Shaw. another chick I saw in a commercial. Okay. Um, I plan on, on catching up on that because um, uh, the the people who created it were the, the people who did the Lego movie and the 21 and 22 Jump Street movies. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, I, I dismissed them with 21 Jump Street, and uh, I admitted in the past that I was wrong to do so. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh well, the, it's I don't know how they do it. They take peop like people's uh like childhoods and actually you know make them better than they probably the the, the actual material better than it was. You know, like yeah, I mean they they managed to make me like uh, Channing Tatum. So yeah, I now never thought like that would be ge- you know like he's considered a comedy genius now all of a sudden. 
Like he's in all kinds of shit. <laughs> the weirdest thing about him, whenever I guess it was Twenty Two Jump Street came out, him and uh, Jonah Hill were doing, you know, like press, and I don't know where they were. But they were being interviewed at some like outdoor event, and the whole time Channing Tatum had like one of those, uh, you know, like like uh, uh, cardboard masks on a stick type of things. Yeah, uh, yeah. Of, of Jonah Hill that he just held up in, in front of his face the whole time. It was just really bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> that is very odd. Well, I don't know if you saw him during like the Academy Awards when they did the Lego um, like music thing uh-uh. like the, the tribute song where you know they always perform all the songs that are nominated and uh, mm-hmm. it was like a big on stage spectacle for that and for everything is awesome and at the end you know because he played he did the voice for superman or whatever yes and uh but <laughs> he was like a little kid like he was like grinning ear to ear and like just like he the most childlike wonder in his face and clapping and standing <laughs> up like i <laughs> Yeah, I know they got shafted at the Academy Awards since this year. Yeah. Thing, but, I, I mean, it was a tough category this year. It's going to get tougher every year for how many animated movies they get put out now. Technology is there where they can put out six to eight good animated movies a year. It's going to be a little more competitive. But yeah, they definitely got the shaft. Um, um, what else movie watch? Or uh, TV. Oh, Walking Dead. Oh, you guys caught up on that or no? Yes, I am. I actually bought the first... Google had a um, sale on the first two compendiums. And you could buy them for... Oh, shoot, it was like four ninety nine a piece. Oh, uh-huh. Jesus. So I bought, yeah, I bought the, the first two. So that's like the first 90... What, 90... I gotta do my math here. Uh, the first one's 48 issues. I've 96, got it. Sitting next. The first 96 issues. So I, I did yeah. like a whole... I caught all the way up Damn. through Alexandria, you know. Well, to- uh, 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 don't spoil shit. I've got I've got Compendium One sitting next to my bed, and I got to read it. No, you don't watch the show. No. I, I've seen season one. I got season two in the other room. I got to uh, watch. Oh, I'm, well, I just named a place. So okay. So they get you know I up through a big port, you know, up to close to basically the hundredth issue, where I guess a bunch of shit goes down. I haven't read that one yet, but so I caught up on that. Now I'm like I know what happened in the comic books now and compared to the to the TV show I kind of only knew about the pri- the prison stuff before mm-hmm. I do know that the TV show one thing has got so much praise was it did not stick to the comics it did not say oh this person died there they have to die here yeah oh yeah it's like a different version I mean there's a yeah. lot of similarities and, and themes but man they've been working the themes pretty good this season except Rick still oh. has his hand <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well, yeah, they kind of and they move roles from one character to a different type of character, you know, in the show. But, Carol's a lot, and of all the coral <laughs> jokes you can eat. Coral. Yeah, coral. Um, my favorite one is uh, uh, why why didn't Barbie ever get pregnant? Because Ken came in a different box. Get it, Coral? Get it, Coral? <laughs> <laughs> coral. Coral. Uh, dad jokes. Um, (laughs) hashtag dad jokes. Um, trying to think of what else we got going on TV wise. You know the the you gonna have the um the summer shows coming up pretty pretty soon. No, Game Game of Thrones starts next month. Yeah, I don't watch that. Oh, you gotta watch it. No, that's a lie. I you totally watch it. Oh yeah, I've read the books. Um, more times than I should admit to. I was hoping um, Justin would be on, so because uh, there have been some news about Ash versus Evil Dead on uh, Stars. Yeah, the uh, the the Evil Lawless. Dead TV show yeah. with Bruce Campbell. Ugh, so excited! And, you know, Sam Raimi, Robert Taper, their production company, same 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 deal. So and they just and they just hired Lucy Lawless to be in it. Too. Now, have you heard that Sam Raimi's going to be doing Poltergeist? I saw the trailer. The trailer's out there if you want to take a look at it. It's, um... Interesting. I, man, I love the original. It's so good. I just... I, kn- I know it has kind of a slightly different take, a little more modern feel to it. How things I just, out. with Raimi, I mean, he's done serious stuff. He showed that with Spider-Man and Darkman. But 
knowing his type of horror, this is either going to be amazing or it's going to be so ridiculously hokey. Well, like, well, like, drag me to hell. That was that ridiculously was, hokey. It was hokey, but it was fun. Like, I like, I enjoyed it. Well, it was, that's because it was like Evil Dead in a parallel universe. Yeah. And then there's the scene with the goat. <laughs> well, but that that's the thing. Like, there's you look at you watch the trailer, and there's a lot of jump moments in it. Mm-hmm. And I think Steven Spielberg didn't have to rely on the jump. He created an no. atmosphere. Yes. And, you know, like there there would be some maybe a little bit of jump in it, but it was. It was just you already were was freaked out as it was. was eerie, but you know, like you, you, there's like the whole clown thing in the trailer. And you're like, you don't even need to do anything with a clown. A clown is fucking scary in its own right. You know. Speaking like, of, yeah. speaking of, let's segue. Oh. <laughs> there's a trailer making its rounds on Facebook called Clown, and they're calling it the the scariest thing since Pennywise. And it looks legitimately freaky. Uh, synopsis is a kid's clown doesn't show up to his birthday, so his dad dresses up as one, and then he can't take the nose or the hair off, and he starts turning into a demon. So anyone who doesn't like clowns probably wants to steer clear. Well, that would be my wife. Yeah, she has a very, she is very fearful. I don't know what's the technical term, the phobia for. It's I've heard it, but I, I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's just... Now, if you want your wife to get over it, you need to go find the nostalgia critic tearing it apart because I cannot look at that movie as scary after him. I mean, Uh-oh. it's just... The scariest thing is, oh, there's a head in the refrigerator. Ah! Yeah, uh, I st- it, it is still pretty freaky. The, the, the problem about it and the movie was the ending. Just how terrible, like... The, the the special effects at the time were just not good. Like yeah, that's true. Spider thing was just it was more ridiculous than scary. Everything up until that point was fucking. And Tim good. Curry's acting is always stellar. Yeah. Oh, still need to watch. Moved on to movies, I guess. Still need to watch Legend. Speaking of Tim Curry, tried wow. once but fell asleep. Wow, yeah, that's a it's a good one. Oh, that reminds me, uh, the Loot Crate this past month. I, did. Mm-hmm. I put up a video on on our channel of Evelyn and well, basically the whole family opening up the loot crate. But they had the book Ready Player Go, Ready Player One, which mm-hmm. I had heard about from Will Wheaton and everything. I know a lot of people were upset because there's no T-shirt. And they didn't like a lot of the stuff in the past box. But I finished that book today. It's it's fantastic. It's it's if you like if you were bo- you know lived through the '80s as a child, it's just all references to the stuff in that in that that decade. It's really good. Uh, but yeah, they they mentioned legend in it. Hmm. If you think about it. Um, so uh, movie stuff. I guess we moved on from TV since a lot of us are either behind or waiting. For- Iron Man gave a small child a prosthetic Iron Man arm today. Yeah, that was awesome. That was pretty. That was sweet. I really like the fact that, um, like Wait, Robert Downey Jr. like very much appreciates the fact that he's not some, like, washed-up hobo living under a bridge. You know what I mean? Credits for Iron Man, yeah, for him coming back and (laughs) making him a lot of money now. Um, Yeah. uh, Well, I think it's really cool, like, even Chris Pratt and... Well, Chris Chris Pratt's just awesome, so... Yeah, well, and Chris Evans, too, like, them doing the the charity stuff, Star-Lord and and, uh, Captain America. They do that all the time. It's pretty... Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, movie stuff. We got uh, Tron 3, I guess, is going to be a thing. When was out. Tron 2? Uh, it was a Tron few Legacy. years ago. Yeah. Uh, it's the okay. Olivia it's Wilde. Worth the oh, I thought Legacy was a spin off. I thought that was like a, a redo, not number two. No, it's got, yeah, no, it's got uh, Jeff Dan or Jeff Bridges. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know. An older version, so no, it's it's technically a, a sequel of sorts. Jeff Bridges was in the original Tron. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if he's going to be in this one. I hope not. Not that I don't. You know, it's just I don't know. I they I kind of overdid it with two versions of him <laughs> Legacy, and I was like, okay, we we can move on from now. Um, but I don't think I don't think he is. He isn't signed on, as far as I know. Um, so that's I mean, apparently Olivia Wilde's going to be a, the kid that was in it. Um, 
So, I mean, Tron Legacy is worth a watch, you know, if you can get it pretty cheap, you know, rent it. Um, I guess uh, there's going to be a Secret of Nim live action CGI reboot. Or MGM. That was one of the. One of the earliest movies I saw. I saw. Um, the Black Cauldron was the first movie I ever saw as a kid, and then Secret of Nim. So that, that's kind of oh, Star Wars stuff, dirt. They announced a spin-off. I don't know if you heard. So they'll have episode seven this year. Or is it next year? The two thousand six it's two thousand it's this year, right? The Star Wars one is? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I thought so. I don't know. Uh, Starring Star Soccer Wars, Ball Droid. It's, it's gotta be, because the Star Wars eight they, they the release date is May twenty sixth, two thousand seventeen. So it's gotta be this year. They wouldn't put it back to back, I don't think. So yeah, they have a but they announced a spinoff too called Star Wars Rogue One. People thought it was about like X-wing pilots, but I, it doesn't necessarily look that way. But it might include like a uh, Han Solo and Boba Fett kind of before Episode Four. Oh, they had a lot of uh, Star Star Wars fans excited though. Um. Justice League, they want Chris Pine as Green Lantern. Uh. So Captain Kirk as Green Lantern. Mm. I can kind of see it as Hal Jordan, but I, I almost kind of want to see uh, John Stewart Green Lantern. Do I don't? Or Guy Gardner. Man, well, yeah. I mean, but that would be more. But he he's more Justice League International. Yeah, he's not. He's not a a list. Yeah, A-list Green Lantern. I mean, I think enough people have seen like Justice League the cartoon that they would totally get into John Stewart. In fact, some some people that's the only Green Lantern they know because the cartoon was so good. Which was why it was so badass when Injustice did the character uh, skin, but they also got the voice actor. Yeah. Um, I get. Uh, I guess He Man is getting a reboot too. Like Sony Pictures yeah. released uh, the Battle Cat, which actually Battle looks Cat. Pretty, pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, it does. I, I want to own a Battle Cat. <laughs> it will eat your children. Speaking of children, mine are very excited. Frozen Two is officially happening. Why? Um, so Frozen, what was that? Well, Frozen Two is officially happening. Oh. I mean, can you? Freaking blew away the box office. I'm not a surprise. I mean, Transylvania, Hotel Transylvania 2 is coming soon, you know, and that did okay. That makes me sad. Adam Sandler needs to learn. Well, That movie wasn't terrible. I mean, for, for what no, it was. No, I enjoyed it. It was funny. It just, ran, it just it didn't, wasn't coherent to the whole thing. It was like, it just ran on. Like, the, yeah. But this one seemed, maybe it'll be a little more coherent, like, as far as the plot-wise goes. Because it was all over the place. It was funny, but it was a little all over the place. Uh, speaking of Disney, too, they're doing a live-action Dumbo. They're doing a live-action everything. Cinderella yeah, comes Cinderella out comes week. out this week. And it's got good reviews. and Well, Kenneth Branagh is, you know. Neil Bortz said it was hilarious and amazing. Yeah. Uh, so. But, like, Tim Burton is going to direct Dumbo. Um, so we'll oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Dumbo and like white face paint, you know, or something. <laughs> I don't know what's good. The black crows the white, are like yeah, just like, six Johnny Depp's. Um, but yeah, then they're talking. I, they just um, they just signed what was it? Joshua Gad, right? Is that the guy's name that played Olaf? Yeah, uh, I haven't heard he, enough. He, they, he's going to be um, uh, Lafo Le, Le, in. Uh, they're doing a live Beauty action Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. I can totally see him as Lefo. Um little fat little short fat guy that hangs out with uh Gaston. 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 C. Uh, so, you know, they mentioned the Ghostbusters, you know, the reboot with the female leads and everything. And then there's been Is that, you know, is that confirmed of, yet? Oh, it's totally confirmed, yeah. No, that's totally what it is. It's um you know, they have a director, they have... I think they have... They've got all the Ghostbusters. Two of them are from Saturday Night, currently Saturday Night Live. Hmm. Um, which is fine, because, I mean, the original Ghostbusters were Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live alum as well. My only con So here's my concern, right? The, the whole premise of the first movie, and Dan Aykroyd talked about this in an interview, was that 
the reason why it's so good is that they took what you know what scholars and quotations you know like the paranormal people at the time were writing or had written about the supernatural and so it was basically serious like the characters believed in this stuff and this stuff was really out there and then they added all the comedic stuff to it i have a feeling like they're not gonna they're just gonna be funny you know in this ghostbusters i think you had to have some of that technical and scientific mumbo jumbo that existed at the time i don't know and and I, and I, maybe you'll lose that kind of edge to it in, in in this reboot. But the interesting thing is now this movie hasn't even come out, and there's a second Ghostbusters movie movie happening with Channing Tatum, and uh, and uh, Chris Pratt. They're calling well, it a the only good I'm thing like, I don't know spinoff of what. The only really? good thing to come out of that is at least we will always have the Ghostbusters Mythbusters epic rap battle. They can't take that away from us. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know, I just, I think it's funny all of a sudden, I'd mentioned before, you know, on a previous podcast that they really needed to do something with Ghostbusters as a property, and now they are kind of going a little crazy. I'm like, well, start with one movie. The video game was good, at least the first one, not Sanctum of Slime or whatever the hell it was called. Yeah. Um... I think, uh... Oh, Suicide Squad stuff is really interesting right now, too. There's been a lot of rumors about Jared Leto as the Joker. Buffing up, because he's going to be, you know, bleached face, scarred, the whole the whole nine yards. So he's going to play like a very kind of beefed up version of the Joker. Which well, is- they're saying it's going to be a Shakespearean Joker. But the thing is this, if they make Suicide Squad based around Joker, it's going to bomb. The intrigue, the appeal of the squad is it's always excluding uh, Harley and Deadshot. It's always made up of B to D level villains, and it's their opportunity to shine. It's always the... Some of the most interesting comics are always the ones where people who have never been given a chance to be serious finally get that chance. And Suicide Squad lets people who are B, C, D level villains have a chance to look competent. Because the big problem when so many villains were introduced in the 80s and 90s was they'd fight this, the good guy once, get decimated, and never be taken serious. Suicide Squad lets them build some credit. It lets them be made to look semi-competent. And if this movie focuses on Joker, who's A-list, who doesn't have the qualities to be a Suicide Squad member, they're just putting it on Joker, the character's back, and they're not letting the other characters have a opportunity to make the movie. Yeah, I, I have a feeling they're, they're not going to be too terribly Joker-centric, because it's not a Joker that's been introduced before. Um, so I don't, and people know who the if Joker like, are. So I don't. It, if it's like the animated Arkham Suicide Squad video that just came out a couple months ago, where Joker was in there but he wasn't a main character, that's fine. That works. That's all great. But they just can't make him the backbone of the movie, or it won't work. Yeah, I, and I don't think that's their intention. Um, and from what I've heard, you know, pe- people, you know, rumors from the set or whatever that the this this the it's pretty insane that the script is, is is very solid. So I have a feeling it's not it's they'll work it'll be cohesive between the characters and the and the actors. I hope. I don't know. Hey, Will Smith uh, is still in it, right? He didn't drop out? Supposedly he's dead shot. Okay, yeah. so Joker's not gonna be the main character. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I mean it's I I think it'll be mo- if anything, it'll be mostly around yeah, dead shot. Which even the, uh, did you watch? Did you watch the Suicide Squad uh, an- animated uh, movie? No, because nobody because nobody cares about the Suicide Squad, dude. It was a great <laughs> it was movie, very good, it and it's also good. it's also based in the Arkhamverse. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was uh, so it was pretty good. The, oh. Rob, they had KG Beast in it. I know how much you love your KG Beast. KG Beast. Okay, sure. <laughs> I have no idea why you're saying that, but okay. Uh, he was in the the thing where Hush, where Two Face was accused of being the bad guy, but he was actually good when his face had healed up. Uh huh. And Hush had killed KG Beast. Yeah, I thought let's go Batman with that. killed KG Beast by le- like locking him in this uh, like bomb shelter in the sewers and like leaving him there to starve to death. I think. Huh. Like that happened. That is a thing that happened. <laughs> I think well, also, like in- to just kill him off. <laughs> 
Like they're in just like Batman, different ways to kill him. Well, what everyone forgets is in Batman Returns, freaking uh, Val Kilmer throws a bomb into a clown's arms and then kicks him into the what? sewers. No, no, that doesn't happen. It does? Because Val Kilmer wasn't in Batman Returns. Okay, Michael Keaton. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Technically, you are both right. Well, well you're more wrong. Kind so, yes, yeah, so Michael Keaton throws a clown and a bomb in a sewer. And nobody yeah. cares. Yeah, but it was kind of like, give him singed eyebrows. Like, it's, I don't know. And it was a clown. They deserve to die. Yeah. <laughs> um, alien stuff, too. Uh, Neil Blanc, 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 um, this guy is set to direct the new Aliens movie, which is will be a sequel to Aliens 2, or Aliens. Aliens. Aliens, the second movie. So it's a, it will not like take third, into account 3. 3 or Resurrection. Yeah, which is... We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Rob, send Crispy the technical difficulty information, or video, or song, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, that'll go right here. Uh, so, yeah, all your, all the stuff we talked about, our dorkasms, are completely gone. That's fine. I'm exhausted. Can we just Wolfen give a... <laughs> Wolfenstein for Kyle. New Order DLC. Go check it out. Exactly. Uh, Raleigh Wizard Comic Con. Go check that out. Doctor Who I met there. Bruce Campbell. Rob met Bruce Campbell. Um, Kyle, Kyle, seventh grade Kyle, made the most cringeworthy mistake of asking Alice Cooper once who and his basis which one of them wrote "Welcome to the Jungle." Um, I just oh, it gives me the douche chills, man. <laughs> I, I did get to sit there though, so I got to sit with him for a while while everyone else was uh, staring at me. That was cool. Man, <laughs> you probably thought you were trolling them too. You know, I don't think trolling was a thing in in the 1900s. Uh, I, pe people still busted balls back then. Like, which one of you uh, yes. wrote a poor sugar on me, man? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, is it right, just uh, me, or does that song sound like it only has like half as many drums as it should? Oh my god, did you just make a <laughs> one-armed drummer joke? <laughs> Holy shit. Well, it's like, it's like which, 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 what has, uh... Nine arms and socks. Death, Death Leopard. Death Leopard. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I still enjoy Death Leopard, though. That's a sad thing. Oh, man. Pour Some Sugar on Me is a fucking fantastic song. Yeah. I love that song so much. But really, half as many drums as it should have. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, Crispy, if it's not a snap and it's not a. crap. If it's not a Mexican <laughs> rap? It's a crap! <laughs> <laughs> it's not a crap. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's been so long. All right, huh? Oh, oh, shit. Jesus.